Good morning. Oh man, how are you guys? I hope, let's start off with this. I hope everybody that is choosing to tune in, whether you're on your phone, your computer, or at home watching us on YouTube or over on News 6 Plus, that whatever your experience was during this storm, that you have made it out. Um, I give my prayers to everybody. I hope cleanup is going smooth. We've all been affected in some way. And let's just be real, the last four days have been uh, pretty crazy, whether it before the storm, during, and now after. Yesterday was rather interesting because we spent our day in Results One out in uh, Volusia and Seminole County. And then the days during the storm, the day during impact of the storm, myself and photojournalist Rob Brewer, we were down in Osceola County and we got to see some amazing preparations that were taking place. Today, we're talking about specifically all the mess that is to follow a storm, okay? Primarily when it's pertaining to our roadway because that's what I do. So we're talking today driving after Milton. Milton a massive storm causing major issues throughout the state of Florida. And uh, right now, it's a beautiful day. My truck reading uh, 23 degrees Celsius because uh, I had a battery issue. So <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's nice outside, uh, upper 70s today. Gonna be a really, really nice day. So I want you to maintain that nice day. And what do I mean by that? I don't need this computer today. Um, this is what I mean. Currently, first thing we're going to talk about are traffic lights. I think it's the most important thing right now. Uh, we have several crashes throughout Central Florida contributed to people just blowing through these lights. And currently, I'm out here at, oh, where am I at? John Young Parkway and Silver Star. And you see some flashing lights out there. Those are two Orlando police officers uh, directing traffic at this intersection. Hot, very, very busy intersection and the traffic light is completely out. What do I mean by that? I mean there's not a light there, it's not flashing, there is no electrical power running to that light, meaning it is not functioning. So thank goodness, at least right now, not overnight, but right now, we do have OPD officers, law enforcement officers directing the traffic there, meaning as you approach that intersection, you must be aware and paying attention to what those officers are instructing you to do because at this point, they are now the traffic control device. But listen, I can show you guys the amount of text messages I have from reporters in the field today, producers that were working, cops that are out there, and just you guys, the viewers that have messaged me. It's it's the only thing in my Instagram messages, my Facebook, and my phone right now. Steve, talk about these traffic lights. And guys, I talk about them so much that I'm almost rude to some of the people who are telling me how to do my job because they're so frustrated, I'm so frustrated. It's just insane, the lack of attention and then people get upset when you do the right thing. So let's talk about what the right thing is, okay? Any type of intersection that does not have a functioning traffic light, you are required to treat it as a stop sign. Complete stop. First to stop, first to go. Vehicle ceases movement at that intersection. Does that make sense? Because for some of you, you're always looking for an excuse. I work with people that are always have an excuse about, well, why they're doing something with traffic or this, and it's a secondary thing until they either get pulled over or a crash occurs, all right? If I sound a little ornery, it's a mix of absolute exhaustion and common sense frustration. It's just insane. If you encounter a flashing yellow light, then you're reducing your speed as you approach that intersection and you're using it as a yield, a caution, you're paying attention. If it's a flashing red for you, then you're treating it as a stop sign as well. What we're gonna do, we're gonna come out, we're gonna do some driving today. I'm gonna make my way throughout the city here in Orlando, I don't wanna get too far today, and just talk and show, excuse me, some of the things that we're talking about and we'll, uh, 
go over some video as well of what we saw. So let's hit the road. Let's come out here to this intersection and uh, kind of see what's going on. Give me one second, I'm gonna adjust some cameras here. There we go. All right, let's get moving and uh, we'll see what the day brings us uh, this morning while we're cruising out here and hanging out. OPD, I saw, just was looking at me and waving. So at least they are New Six fans. And I tell you guys, that was probably some of the coolest thing, the positive out of all this. I met so many of you. And it, I, I'm an emotional, serious guy. I get so happy and so emotional about meeting you guys because at the end of the day, this job found me and serving with you guys, the community, is what I enjoy to do. So let's come out here to the intersection where they are stopping traffic for us at this point. And we'll wait, and we will wait until OPD gives us the sign. So you need to be atta paying attention. See how this traffic lights out? There's lights flashing off to the side, OPD officer wearing a reflective vest. You need to be paying attention because their life's in jeopardy as they are making sure traffic moves. They've made some modifications here, all right? So you need to pay attention because yeah, the traffic is moving, they're directing the traffic. However, you can't make a left in certain places. You can't make a right in certain places. And they are doing this intentionally so that they can keep what we call the flow of traffic. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. It's gonna be a little inconvenient, but they're doing their best to keep traffic moving for us today and prevent crashes from happening. Yeah, you may not wanna make a right, you may wanna go straight, but you just need to follow the instructions that are out there because they're doing their best to make sure that things start moving. So you have to pay attention. And this is sporadic, guys, all throughout Central Florida. You just never know. Uh, you may think, oh, my neighborhood didn't get hit too bad. But you don't know what is actually occurring uh, when it comes to the streetlights. They're run on different uh, kind of grids, and one thing can really mess them up. So this officer's stopping traffic on Silver Star, and they're gonna give us the sign to go, and we're gonna cruise right on by. And we're gonna cruise here and take off here as we uh, continue our exploration. So here's another traffic light, very similar situation, but this one is what? It is blinking yellow, meaning I'm gonna slow my speed as, don't be this clown, look at this clown in the Lexus. We got our first one. There's that clown, accelerated, I'm gonna slow down and then we proceed through. The problem with our clown count today, guys, we only have five. We've only got five in the, in the system. And I'm thinking we're gonna break through that five, so we'll see what happens, we'll see how this goes. But to just fly through these flashing yellows makes absolutely no sense because you're telling me you have trust for every other driver out there. I do not, I absolutely do not. Heck, I trust nobody even in the grocery store. So you need to pay attention, flashing yellow Slow your speed. I'm not asking you to come to a complete stop. I'm asking you to use caution, slow it down, tap the brakes a little bit, and then proceed through. The other intersection should be uh, flashing red, and they would be required to stop. But do you trust those drivers? I don't. So make sure you're paying attention, please. Um, I was told that this intersection over here was not functioning, but it does look like it is now back in order. I'm talking about John Young Parkway at WD Judge Road, and this light is functioning and back to normal. So we're gonna cruise right through it without a problem. And it's about being aware, guys. Uh, I know we're all real fatigued right now. I know I am, I'm done. So like if someone said, Steve, you're tired? No, I'm done, done. But I got responsibilities with you guys, so that's why we're out here doing this. Um, so, okay, we're coming up here, approaching State Road 50, and John Young Parkway looks pretty good. We're behind an Orange County uh, Sheriff's Deputy here as we make our left turn. Let's go on to State Road 50 and go for a little drive. That is a gorgeous pickup truck. I'm sorry, I'm a nerd, and I have never seen a slick top, no light bar on top pickup truck. That is pretty... I'll show you guys. Oh, and it's got LPRs on it. You guys know what an LPR is? Ready? License plate readers, LPRs, and they're attached to that truck there. That was sneaky. That was very, very sneaky. 
All right, we're gonna keep driving around a little bit and uh, talk about a few things. So yesterday, while we were out and about up in Volusia, it was very sporadic. But if you are watching this from Volusia County, I need you guys to be very aware, especially within Orange City, you guys have a lot of washouts. So why we make our way, just checking out town. Let's talk about some of those things that we did see yesterday out on the road. We have some great video from that uh, while we're out there. Look at this right here. This is from uh, Veterans Parkway and Volusia uh, Avenue out there, Volusia Drive, excuse me, over by Tremont. That's Tremont right there, completely washed out. And this was just the force of the water coming through and just taking it out. And this area right here, a residential area off a of monastery, I'm talking complete washout, guys. Absolutely insane. So this is the kind of stuff that you have to be uh, aware of because our roadway infrastructure is compromised at this point. There are areas of flooding right there, but you see on those wheels right there how much wake they're causing? This is stuff we wanna be careful about. So if you have to drive in flooded water like we were right there in Results 1, that was probably up to the halfway point of our wheel. We're driving in a manner not to kick up too much water because what you're doing is you're causing more damage to people's uh, yard and their homes. Out here, residential areas and businesses completely flooded out in the roadways. Some people not even realizing that the roadway is flooded until they're right up on it and then they're hitting the brakes. These businesses, parking lots and stuff like that, gonna take days before a lot of this water starts to dissipate out of the area. So you've gotta be careful because the water has to go somewhere, right? So if you see flooded areas, use that as a caution indicator, meaning don't just maintain your speed as you see that water. I know for some of you guys driving trucks and big SUVs and stuff like that, it's a lot of fun, but I'm telling you right now, you're gonna end up flooding out your engine and things like that. Saxon Boulevard right there in Volusia. Really, really rough. All right, coming back out here real quick, I wanna show you this traffic light out here that no one's paying attention to at the moment over here at Westmoreland. Look, traffic light's out. We don't have enough clowns, but everyone here just going right through it. I am not gonna go right through it. We're gonna make a complete stop, and I'm gonna honk at that idiot. This, look at this semi, right through it. Right through it. We're gonna give a clown right there. Are you kidding me? This is the problem, guys. Clown two, and we're giving it to two drivers that got dedicated that. Unbel... I get so frustrated. How are you not gonna even touch your brakes? That's like saying, let go, let God, let Jesus take the wheel. I'm a fan of Jesus, I'm a fan of God, but he's not gonna, they're not gonna control my vehicle. I'm responsible for controlling my car. My, and then those are the people that are gonna get an attitude when the crash happens or they catch a $260 ticket. Unbelievable, looking here, caution, all right, nice and clear. But if the light is out, that's like putting your hand in, in a tiger cage. You're like, oh, let me just check it out. No. Oh my gosh. But there has been, there's a doctor that we know at News 6. His mother stopped at a light this morning in Seminole County, then went through the light at 434 because no one was there. And as she went through it, someone just oh, and slammed into her. It's, it's so uncalled for, so uncalled for. Um, but a lot of that flooding from yesterday will linger and you have to be weary of that. We're gonna make our way uh, and seeing that right there, that was a lot guys. See how much water just coming in from some of these lakes, these retention ponds and things like that. So as you begin to drive through flooded areas, you must decrease your speed and then judge the depth judge the calculations of how fast you're going, what you can handle, what kind of vehicle you're in. Yesterday, I saw a few Corollas, small Hondas, Priuses, things like that, going into the intersections at a high rate of speed, and it's just pushing up on the front of their car. And it's like, do you really trust your, your vehicle that much that you can push through something like that? I don't even trust results one like that. I have to make my own judgments. 
just these videos, guys. This was all taken by me and my photojournalist yesterday, Rob Brewer. And just to see this stuff was, was crazy. See this guy on the bike? These pedestrians that are close to the areas? This is you putting your life at risk in a way that I would never even do. We're talking road structure that is so compromised on the underneath that it's, it's still decaying. It's still falling. It's still breaking up. So please, if you're out and about and you're trying to sightsee, keep a safe distance. Stay on the infrastructure, the sidewalks that are not compromised. But if you're just getting out and about because you want to drive around and see things, please don't. You're contributing way to the problem. Uh, also, as you're going to be driving around, there are going to be roadways that are closed uh, that may not normally be closed. Right, right here off of Livingston and Orange Avenue. Look at that off to the right there. Trees everywhere, debris all over the place. And this could take time before we start to reopen this stuff. Why? This is why. Because there is a list that crews have to begin to then kind of one at a time, one at a time. It will happen, but it's gonna happen slowly. The branches and the tree debris are gonna happen first. Then obviously the infrastructure roadway that was compromised will get fixed. The flooding, that's all natural stuff, guys, and we have to be able to be patient. Our meteorologist team, led by the amazing chief meteorologist Candace Campos, let me tell you, I am personal friends with Candace. Uh, we are both friends at work and outside of work. And she was so nervous during this because she's like, you know, I'm just trying to do my best to give people the information that I know is coming. And I told her yesterday when I got home, I was like, Candace, it's because of you that so many people were prepared, that so many people were aware of what's happening. The entire team followed her lead. And I can tell you, it was so, I'm so happy to be part of a team like this. But these waters are gonna continue to rise. And some of you may be like, wait, why? The raining has stopped. Well, the water has to go somewhere. It just doesn't disappear. So unfortunately, a lot of these flooded areas will take time in order for that flooded flooded area to get back to normal. So you gotta have some patience because some roadways will actually see an increase in flooding. Probably areas like the Sanford area, um, our Conway area, uh, Volusia, 100%. Some of those areas will see some massive uh, increases. Other areas, you know, it's gonna go away in a couple of days. But you've gotta be very aware of your driving because that water has to go somewhere. So we're gonna make our way a little further here towards uh, the downtown Orlando area into the residential area, but you got to just have some patience because we just took a massive hit from a really nasty storm. All right, so let's head towards uh, Lake Eola this morning so we can see. Look at this is what's interesting is the uh, that the fact that they were able to transportation crews, engineering crews were able to get out and kind of get lanes cleared but there's still gonna be a lot of debris. So for my motorcycle riders out there, my bicyclists, even my pedestrians, I need you to be super careful as you hit the road because yes, we have cleared the roads and the travel lanes for the most part for your vehicular traffic, but I'm gonna tell you right now, your bike lanes, uh, your e-bikes, uh, even some of the sidewalks and stuff like that, they're still covered in a lot of debris. Uh, even my motorcyclists need you to be very, very careful. Uh, this is this is this isn't fun, and it's going to take a few days before we kind of reach back to a normal commute, a normal traffic experience. So we're here over at Rosalind and Church. Make our way. Uh, the reason I'm coming this way this morning is because I remember the last storm. We saw a lot of issues out here, a lot of detours and stuff. But for the most part, I was talking with uh, our producer. You guys know Thomas. He's uh, controlling us right now. That. We, we were so prepared because of what this storm was that we were ready for what it was. And by the time it got to us, yeah, let's, I'm not downplaying it at all, but it was kind of random. The wind gusts and the heavy rains really hit certain areas a little bit more and then a little less in others. That At least for Central Florida, obviously Tampa, our West Coast, man. 
really devastating impacts. These videos out of Hillsborough are just insane watching the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office on jet skis and airboats and stuff like that, uh, really trying to rescue people. And if you think we have a problem with our roads right now, well, no, they are gonna have a long problem. So you wanna always make sure you're aware, yielding to pedestrians, wait till they clear at least more than 60% on the other side. 60% is my rule, 50% is the state rule, I give you six, I tell 60 of the percent of the other side, so you don't end up catching a ticket. But you see, even some parking spaces still filled with debris, Lake Eola is high right now. That is high water levels out there this morning. Looks like we've had some major good cleanup out in uh, downtown Orlando, always a plus. I'm not sure what this Lynx bus is about to do, so I wanna be careful. And we're gonna pass the Lynx bus because it has its hazard lights on, but I know a stop sign's here, so I'm gonna stop real quick, look left, look right, and we're gonna continue through. Um, but as these cleanups occur, things are gonna be kinda crazy out here. You need to be just very aware of what is happening. What did we get to talk about today? If you're just joining us this morning, it's all about driving after Milton. The, the roadways are, are nasty. Um, pedestrians, though, they're out and about. So you need to be aware of that. A lot of the bike lanes are covered in debris. And you can just see that out here. Look at the left side of the road there. Sidewalk covered in trees and branches and stuff like that. So you just need to be aware. Also, while you're walking. Man, as I'm talking here, I'm just thinking of things. Falling limbs. You think these trees are completely secure at this point? Absolutely not. So you need to be careful of that. Um, what else did we need to talk about? What did we talk about? We've talked about traffic lights, obviously major problem because people are just doing whatever they want and they should not be doing that. And look, here's another one. Traffic light out here at Summerlin. So what are we doing? This is the fun part because people's brain doesn't seem to work. The light's not going to change. You need to make the effort. Here we go. So I'm gonna to come to the intersection of Summerlin and Central, complete stop, but I don't trust anybody. So I'm gonna look left, I'm gonna look right, and I'm gonna wait, they stopped, so I'm gonna cruise on through this morning. All, I'm, the biggest thing I need to ask from you guys, make the effort to protect yourself out on the road and do the right thing, and do not trust another driver at an intersection if that traffic light is out. I'll say it again for the people that may have had me low on volume. Do not trust another driver at an intersection that it, with a traffic light that is out. Meaning, make your stop. Do not assume that that other driver is going to stop. That is the biggest thing. Come next week. Come next week, we're gonna start to see some things because people are gonna be headed back to school. Pedestrians, weather's gonna be great. What are we gonna have on the side of the road? Large piles of debris. You might be saying, Steve, what the heck does that have to do with pedestrians? Well, you guys know, I'm gonna talk about everything. Visible obstructions out on the road. Your visibility, at an intersection or a driveway or maybe even a school crossing or at a school uh, bus stop. Kids are gonna still do what they do. That you may not be able to see them because of the large debris piles that we are gonna have on the side of the road. I gotta just talk about everything traffic related, guys, because the crashes that are happening, the clowns that we've seen, they're, they're serious, and the circus isn't even in town. The circus just left with Milton. So if you are a clown and you're going to come out here today, take the big rubber nose off and just drive. That's all I'm asking. Pay attention. If a traffic light's working, follow the rules of the traffic light. If the traffic light is not working, then take the steps to pay attention. Okay? Do not drive in any of those flooded waters that I've, we've seen over the past few days. Um, the video that we just showed you a little while ago, super detailed, all coming from results one. So it's not like we're making this stuff up. Some areas do still have water in the roadways. Other areas are going to be closed for weeks. 
Some people saying, oh, yeah, it'll be back open in a few days. No. I think some of our areas will be flooded for weeks. And then those areas that are just trashed out and the roadway is gone, that will take months to fix. So pack the patience. It's the most cliche statement I make, but the most true is because I just want you to make patience a conscious effort. These businesses are going to be struggling for days to come to repair any damage from the water. If you have to drive through this stuff, make a smart decision. Do not make a knee-jerk reaction that, oh, I got to go this way and I can't figure out any other way to do it because you might flood your vehicle out. You might cause a crash. And in return, you may just cause unneeded stress that just not as needed. So guys, please, as you are kind of coming out of the stress of the storm, understand that you are in control of yourself and your vehicle out here. Mother Nature, she's already done her stuff, but we need you to make the effort to be safe out on the roadways. Our police departments, our sheriff's offices, our fire departments, they're doing what they can to make sure everything is taken care of, but they can't sit in the passenger seat with you. I can't remind you every single day, hey, make sure you stop at that non-functioning stoplight. That's like me saying, hey, make sure you don't put your finger in the electrical socket today. I shouldn't have to tell you these things, but yet here we are. So if you're out and about today, please be safe. We're going to call it a day. It is Friday. I am uh, functioning at about a 3% level, but I thought we did a pretty decent job. And if you are interested in a lot of the coverage that we had, head over to clickorlando.com and look at some of the devastation that we've had in our Central Florida area. Our entire New 6 team just rocking and rolling these past couple of days. I have never been so proud of uh, my weather team. And, uh, you know, we do have the best chief meteorologist in Central Florida. And the fact that she's on our morning show, that's historic. And she's my partner to work with. Come on, guys. So listen, have an amazing Friday. Please do your best. Be careful while you're doing cleanup. I'm going to start my cleanup this afternoon, but I need you to be very careful while you're doing it. Watch out for power lines, uh, your chainsaw safety. If you're on a ladder and you can have a spotter, try to have a spotter, please. So I will catch you guys Monday. It is a holiday on Monday, but I will be there and I think I'm anchoring the desk. So tune in. Uh, please be careful as you're driving around. Have a safe day and I'll talk to you guys later.